Anyway, let me let me see uh, how Belinda reacts to them. Uh, she is a regular. She's used to seeing them in the other glasses. Uh, we like to look at issues involving the environment and the planet, and we do it in a segment called It's the Planet, Stupid. The Planet Earth. Some call me nature. I am very passionate about the planet Earth. A living, breathing planet capable of sustaining whatever life forms we see fit to deposit on it. Spock, judging by the pollution content of the atmosphere, I believe we have arrived. It's the planet stupid. No, no, no. It's the planet stupid. Our guide for It's the Planet Stupid, Belinda Weymouth. Hi, Belinda. How are you? How are you, Mark? I'm well. Uh... Do you I think your glasses of... are great, by the way. I think thank that's you, interesting. thank on. you. That's what I wanted to do. Yeah. I need a little more love. Gosh, yeah. the chat is so brutal. You know, they don't. They're not. They're not non-reflective. They're not. I mean, come, gosh, can I not get a little love on my own program? Um, it's great to have you in the mix always, and I look forward to information about this uh, planet, which uh, clings to life. I feel in some way. Um, tell me what you have for us today. Okay. So it, this has been a really big week and then today's a really big day. So I don't know if you heard about what Biden did yesterday, but Biden went to Co Colorado's third congressional district. Uh, and you know who their representative is, Lauren Boebert. And he did it because he's on this campaign to really tout his achievements, what he's doing, where Bidenomics is really working and creating jobs, what he's doing for the planet, and then to really contrast him, contrast himself with GOP extremists, you know, what he calls the mega Republicans, which um, Ms. Bobert would be uh, one of, I think. We you know, might all agree on that. So anyway, he was addressing um, workers and people at CS Wind. Uh, CS Wind is a South Korean company. It's the world's largest wind turbine manufacturing plant. It's in Pueblo, in uh, Colorado. Uh, it's created 250 jobs so far. There are another 850 to come. It's a very poor area. So, uh, you know, it's there, it's creating jobs, and it's completely enabled by the IRA, the Inflation Reduction Act, you know, uh, Biden's uh, Climate, Health and Jobs Bill, which uh, Lauren Boebert is saying should be repealed. But the fact is, this bill has allowed this huge wind turbine, you know, manufacturing plant to be there and to create those jobs. So I think this is, um, I think it's really important because I think he needs definitely to tout, you know, his achievements because I don't think that the public know about them. Uh, it's very important for Gen Z and millennial voters because polls show that they are much more interested in climate action, uh, you know, than they are on the economy. You know, for them, the climate is a number one, you know, uh, uh, issue. And you can see why, because they're going to be facing you know, a future, you know, warmer planet with crazier weather. And um, so, and then today he announced uh, that they're going to be uh, replacing 9 million lead pipes throughout the U.S. over the next 10 years. Now, this is enormous because, you know, lead is a neurotoxin and it's delivering, uh, you know, our, our water pipes are delivering that neurotoxin, you know, right to the taps, uh, the faucets. Uh, in our homes, uh, you know, we're drinking it, our kids are drinking it, it's linked to uh, brain damage. So that was a, an exciting uh, announcement. It's wild, by the way, isn't it, that lead so permeates the infrastructure associated with, you know, bringing water to all the places that you just described? I isn't it just crazy? I mean, you know, we've just yeah. known about le lead poisoning has been known about for a long time. You know, this isn't like saying, oh, well, it's tough to turn it all around, man. We've only known about it for 10 years. No, we've known about it for decades. Yes. And yet yes, it's yes, still absolutely. Out there, isn't and and the, the amazing thing that happened when we took lead out of gas and that, um, you know, the uh, crime rate uh, went down, you know, across the U.S. because the lead in the gas was making, you know, people more aggressive and crazy. And you could look at statistics and go, oh, you know, cause and effect, you know, this – this really had uh, a, had a positive impact, so I think it's great that they're going to you know get rid of lead pipes and you know for our drinking uh, water. It's huge. And then today, 
uh, COP28 uh, started. So this is the Conference of the Parties, the 28th meeting. Um, and this is for the nations of the world to discuss climate change, what they're doing to mitigate their emissions, uh, how it's going to be paid for. Uh, one of the first things that they're going to be looking at and that they really want to sort of make a signature of this COP is uh, loss and damage. And this is for vulnerable countries who can't, um, you know, don't have the funds, uh, but are definitely being, you know, the most adversely affected by climate change. There was an agreement at COP27 to put $100 billion into the kitty for these countries, uh, you know, richer countries helping poorer countries cope. Uh, that hasn't happened yet. So that's a big sort of, you know, fingers crossed that COP28 is able to achieve that. What is super controversial about COP28, and you probably know this, Mark, is it's being held in Dubai, the United Arab Emirates, uh, in gleaming new buildings that are built with oil money. And sure. the president of COP28 is Sultan Al-Jabir. I think I'm saying his name right. Uh, and he is the head of the United Arab Emirates state-owned oil company. It is one of the largest and dirtiest oil companies in the world. And so this guy is the president of COP28. You know, so people are, you know, um, up in arms about that. They, you know, out of one side of his mouth, he's talking about, yes, we're uh, moving to renewables, we're embracing renewables. And out the other side of his mouth, you know, we're going to be uh, increasing our production of oil and gas. You know, that is going to happen. And then uh, documents got leaked, the BBC got them, that the United Arab Emirates COP team have been told to promote oil and gas deals on the sidelines of COP28, to use this as an opportunity, you know, to, to make deals. So there are all these people who go, you know, 70,000 uh, representatives of 200 countries are there you know, trying to make headway on uh, cutting emissions and then on the sidelines, you know, there are a lot of people who are trying to promote their oil and gas. I mean, it, it's so it's true. I love that. You know, the the idea that this conference is being held there and you have these key figures in essentially accelerating the end of the world uh, as a result of fossil fuel emissions running things, that's mm. been controversial. And, and it was, mm. you know, sort of this train that you could see coming down the tracks, but sort of that was where it was. And then both things are true. As you've just said, Belinda, they are making some strides and encouraging at that COP summit to uh, begin to explore and actually uh, enterprise alternative energies and be part of that. But that whole kind of cognitive dissonance associated with meantime, they're meeting in their hotel suites and in the hallways to make new fossil fuel deals. It's crazy. I mean, it's, it, it's a, uh, it's such an impure situation, you know, and you just wonder, I always come around to, well, you know, the perfect is the enemy of the good, but if you actually do the arithmetic, uh, maybe there's, you know, less good being done than the impure stuff, you know? Yeah. I, I don't I know. Think, I don't know what the answer is. I don't, I mean, maybe, maybe on balance, it's still a good thing, right? Well, the fact is, is we can't do away with oil and gas, you know, today and tomorrow right. be running on renewables. That's just not going to happen, you know, and obviously it has to be a phase out, but I think for so many people, it's very, um, you know, discouraging to hear about, you know, this increase in production that's going to happen, the fact that, you know, it's happening, uh, you know, here in the States. Um, so, you know, and it's sort of, um, I mean, it, it's sort of, it's it's hard to wrap one's head around it because it just seems, you know, completely hypocritical. And the problem is, is because COP28 is being hosted there in the UAE, a lot of people don't have high hopes for it. You know, and there will be a lot of nations who are really fighting for their lives, who are, you know, island nations who are, you know, about to be inundated with uh, sea level rise, which we've been talking about on the program. You know, we were talking about the islands of Tuvalu and what happened in the Carteret Islands in um, Papua New Guinea. Um, I mean, the UAE itself is going to become an unlivable country because of uh, rising, you know, temperatures. So, you know, they absolutely should be 
uh, switching from, you know, oil and gas to renewables if they want to, you know, keep living there. And they would say, well, we won't be a country if we stop, you know, selling oil. <laughs> so, uh, but but there is that tug of war going on. But it, it's yeah. fascinating nonetheless. I mean, um, it's, uh, I, I was reading about it a few days ago and I thought, wow, it's just, it's just, this is just the state of the state. But I think you really actually cast it in a better light, which is, you know, look, fossil fuels aren't going away. So those deals are still being made, but let's just hope that on balance, the alternative energy systems that are being talked about and being aggressively pursued by many of these oil rich countries, uh, they may carry the day ultimately. So, yeah, I mean, it's sort of a fingers crossed situation, you know, and the fact is two weeks ago, Biden and Xi Jinping met and they agreed that, you know, China and the U.S. will uh, triple their renewable installation um, by 2030. That's seven years away. So, you know, that's a really big deal. I mean, Biden won't be at COP28. Kamala Harris will be there, John Podesta, John Kerry. I mean, we'll have a lot of representatives, you know, talking about what's happening. You know, the other thing about COP28, which is really hard, is you get all these countries together and they talk about what they want to do. You know, at, um, you know, 2015, when they met in Paris, it was a really big deal when they agreed, no, 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 we don't want to let the planet heat up to two degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. We want to keep it to 1.5. Um, and that was seen as huge. But the problem is nothing at COP is binding. You know, so they make these, you know, you set these good intentions, but then... There's no one, you know, who's monitoring them. What happens is, you know, the, you know, all these delegates go back to their countries and they address uh, reducing emissions, um, you know, in their own ways. But there's, sure. there's, you know, and obviously you couldn't have a, you know, I mean, who would it be who would sort of go around and, you know, be the, you know, the carbon emissions police of the world? I mean, that would that wouldn't be a good job. But um this the loss and damage if they could really agree to that and start putting money in the kitty and work out you know the criteria for who gets it because that's the other thing they haven't worked out you know who you know what um uh the um you know what constitutes your uh you know your need the most for getting the money and that that really has to happen you know these countries need that help um and then if they could agree on a goal like, you know, China and the U.S. just did, uh, you know, to triple uh, renewable installation, you know, that would be that would be huge. But then it has to happen. You know, you can say sure. all these things and make these commitments, but but it, it's then actually, you know, putting uh, your words into action. And that's that's I, what we need is we need. Action. I felt the yeah, the Paris Climate Accords were a good example of that. A lot of pronouncements, but sort of unenforceable. Um, you do need the pronouncements and you do need to meet and you need the conversation, but you also need the follow through. So, uh, yeah. Belinda, I will be gone for the rest of uh, this month. Um, mm. What? But you will be with us uh, next week. It will be Kim. Kim, are you prepared to speak with Belinda for next week's It's the Planet Stupid? Yes, absolutely. I love All Belinda. Right. I know she's pretty well, great. I, I, it's mutual. I love you back, Kim. So Aww. I will enjoy uh, uh, the rest of it's. Oh, it's, oh, it's the month of December. You'll be away, yeah. Mark. I know. Three I don't want to go. I don't want to go away. I have to go away. It's you know, mm. I, I, it's like a forced vacation. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. And, and it's in a month. I don't want to be away even for this month. I don't know. I, I, I look. Life. You know, I, I don't mean to complain. Life. It's not like I'm being sent to prison or something. I don't. I, I feel almost weird complaining about it. It's not like I have to have some, you know, hospital stay. But it's. Um, I just. But you know, you know, when you don't want to do something, it's like. Yeah. Anyway, you know, I they won't do this be here. to me all the time. I don't know Thank what the you. hell they do it for. Thank you. Casey gets it. Uh, Belinda Weymouth, everybody. See you, Belinda. Bye. 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 See you that's, next week. That's it's the planet stupid for today. Mm -hmm. More. It's the planet stupid. No, no, no. It's the planet stupid. Next time. Only on the Mark Thompson Show. Hi, it's Mark, and I thought that was great. Hit the notification bell. You'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped, and please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.